Good morning. Welcome to Real Life with Andrea. I There's been so much going on in the world today and over the past few weeks and months. And I have had to process a lot of information because you hear things on the news, on the media, Facebook, whatever, wherever it is that you're getting your information and you immediately feel something towards that event and sometimes our feelings are not valid and sometimes our feelings are based on a lack of information and so I think it's important that anytime we have a strong emotional reaction to something that we take some time to uh, pray over that reaction as well as to um, sort out truth and use our heads and the wisdom that God gave us as human beings in order to discover the um, how we should be reacting to some of these things in light of um, if you're a Christian in light of your relationship with Jesus so we're going to talk about that a little bit as it pertains to immigration, illegal aliens, and all the things that have been happening um, over the past few months with that. So stay tuned and we'll be back in just a second. All right, so are you ready to get started? So, um, so much is going on um, in, with regard to illegal immigration. And if you have not been with me before on this channel, this is an unedited channel. I try to jump out and give my opinions and my thoughts and my experiences surrounding different things that are going on in the world today or anything that really touches my heart um, randomly. So welcome if you're new. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button. You'll be notified when I do post new content if you like what I'm doing. So, illegal immigration. So, the murder of Lakin Riley has obviously brought a firestorm of media, as it should. The murder was preventable, and nobody denies that, because the man, the illegal alien who committed the crime, who allegedly committed the crime, um, had already been arrested more than once for crimes in the United States. He was already identified as an illegal alien and therefore deportation or jail would have prevented this crime. Now, there's a people saying, people, and we won't we are not here to debate the Democrat versus Republican stand on this, conservative versus liberal. The reality is, is that our government should be protecting us, the citizen, first. They should be protecting law-abiding citizens over uh, lawbreakers, and then even lawbreakers, I think, over the illegal aliens. Just the word illegal means that they're breaking the law. They're lawbreakers. Now, we can go into, we need to protect their um, right to ha being respected and all of that as people, and I do agree with that. I do not think that there is any reason to say horrible things about people that are not true. But when we are speaking truth, truth truth is truth. If you didn't want that to be said about you, then you shouldn't have done the act. So we are speaking truth regarding this illegal alien. He has been in trouble with the law several times and he is in the country illegally and now he has murdered someone. What should happen to him? Should his rights be protected? What rights does he have as a non-citizen lawbreaker of this country. Well, it seems as though there are people who think that his rights are more important than those of the law-abiding citizens. And that 
shows a sad state of affairs in our country that the governments of both our federal government as well as our many of our state governments are not protecting the people of this country period so what should happen I think if people are in the country illegally and they are found out to be in the country illegally and they do not have a um, claim for mm, the word is escaping me but you, you know a, a claim that they left their country because of persecution because of fear of death those kinds of things then they should be sent back to their country it doesn't matter who they are. We are a country that welcomes immigrants. We can only take so many, the, the, the economy can only handle so much, but if you are fleeing your country for fear of your life or the life of your children, then there's a process and, and they don't turn people away for that. But if you are fleeing your country because you just want to, um, then there is also a legal way to get in the country that way, that you can apply for a visa. You can come into the country legally. And if you can't apply for a visa for whatever reason, then, you know, then, the, I hate to say it, but you don't belong here. And I don't think that that minimizes people's dignity or their personship or it doesn't malign them. Um, I was fortunate enough to be born in this country. I know many people who weren't born in this country and live in this country and they are here legally and they belong here. I would never say that they, that they don't. I don't consider myself to be racist. This isn't about race. It doesn't matter what country you're coming from or what skin color you're coming from. There are laws for a reason and we need to abide by them. And it's sad that we don't. And it's sad that what, what, what breaks my heart even more is that I know a young man who is um, currently in jail and if he were an illegal alien, he wouldn't be in jail. He'd have been let free. But instead, because he is a citizen of this country and he has done something wrong, he's sitting in jail. Now, do I think he should be sitting in jail for his crime? Yes, but I think that it's not right for us to treat illegal aliens as if they don't have to follow the law. The law is the law. Our lawmakers should have to follow the law. And I know that there are some exceptions within that for being president and being lawmakers that gives them a little bit of leeway. And I'm, you know, as long as we're following the constitution, then I'm all for that. But when it comes to not enforcing the laws that have been made for every citizen who lives in this country and every illegal alien that is here in this country, legal or illegal, the, the laws are there. They should be enforced. If we're not going to enforce them, just get rid of them. Why should anybody have to follow them? So, I don't know what you think about that, but I think that it is just a crime against the people, the good citizens of this country, that people who break the law and come here illegally and they're being invited illegally. It's not even that, I mean, they're breaking the law by coming, but the government is breaking the law by encouraging them to come and funding their coming and funding their being here and spending our hard earned money to bring people in here who are here under false pretense, many of them. Now, I know that not every illegal alien that comes in is a criminal. But how do we know who is and who isn't when they're not going through the proper channels and coming in the country by the channels that they were created in order to bring them in? It's a difficult situation. You know, 
moms who come and they have their babies on the border because they want a better life for themselves and for their babies. And so now their baby is a sit-in, so the citizen, so that has to say, that's tricky. But when we allow people to do that, then we're setting aside the law. And I know that, and this is a difficult one because there's grace and there's mercy and there's this and there's that, and we want to protect people. And I know that other countries may make it hard for them to leave and to come and to live in this country. Asylum, that's the word. Um, but it is still illegal. And if, if that's something that the government and the state's government and the people of this country want to, want to do, then it should be part of the law not allowing some people to break the law and some people not to break the law, then you need to change the law. The people that now are allowing this immigration to come in, they don't want to change the law because the people don't want to change the law, but they also don't want to turn anybody away. So they are skirting the law. They are not following the law. And it is coming back to bite this country and it will continue to come back and bite this country until it's stopped. What do we do with all of them who are in here? Even if something changes tomorrow and we shut our borders and we are going back to only allowing people with asylum, appropriate asylum claims to come into the country or people who come through the proper channels, what do we do with the millions of illegal aliens that are already in the country? Do we allow them to stay here as long as they don't break the law? What do we do if they break the law? Do we put them in jail? Do we send them back to their country? Do they get due process? I mean, they're not citizens of the United States, so do they get due process? They are still human beings. So there's a lot of questions that would have to be answered around that. And I think that it's important that we answer it because these people are human beings. But, I mean, for those of us who are Christians and you read the Old Testament, oh, the Jews, oh, they had some pretty harsh laws. And even their own people, their own citizens, especially their own citizens, would be put to death for breaking the law, taken out in stone. Now, we don't live back then, and I don't think that we should take people out and stone them. But I think that when we allow crime and we allow people to break the law and we kind of let it be okay, then we are setting a precedent for being a people who doesn't value law and order, who doesn't value the sanctity of human life. That's another issue. Who doesn't value the people who the working people who are here trying to build a better life for their families, who are trying to do what's right every single day, to build into their communities, to have hope and a future. And then we let other people just come in and destroy that. And we say, well, but they're human beings too. Well, I, the rights of people, the rights of one person shouldn't infringe upon the rights of another person. If one person comes in and ruins somebody else's life, then they're wrong. Because we, you know, if we go back to the Founding Fathers, you know, we all have certain inalienable, inalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And those things we all, every person has the right to until that right infringes upon somebody else. If it makes somebody happy to be a mass murderer, that's not okay. That pursuit of happiness is not okay because it infringes on somebody else's pursuit of happiness. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. I believe in freedom of speech. I do not believe that we have the right to just maliciously malign people because we feel like it. It is entirely different if you are speaking the truth and the truth hurts because the truth should be told. And if someone is saying something wrong, like me, if you find that something I've said is untruthful, by all 
things. Tell me. I want to be a truth teller. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I'm not out to get people, which is why I said we are not talking about politics or certain people, certain anybody in this video. But the reality is there is a truth to when, when we speak of the freedom of speech, it isn't for me to say whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, about whoever I want. I can share my feelings on different subjects, on different things, on politics, and even on people, as long as it is, as it is the truth. I will not be voting for Joe Biden for president. I do not like what he has done to this country. As a person, I don't know him. I can't speak about who he is as a person. I can only speak about what I have seen during his term as president and what I do not like about how this country has morphed. I do not like that we are constantly at war and it seems as though we could have avoided those situations. I do not like that we are spending more money outside of our country for other people than we are inside of our country to help our own people. And I do not like that we are allowing millions of people that we have no idea what kind of people those are coming into our countries. For all we know, there's terrorists coming into this country and setting up cells and they're going to destroy us from inside. For all we know, different countries have emptied out their prisons and sent them over here. And now they are free illegal aliens to commit their crimes because we don't know. And I don't like that. So I will not vote for Joe Biden for president again. I do not like that he does not believe in the sanctity of life and that a baby in the womb does not have the rights and to, the right to be protected. I don't like that, and so I won't vote for it. But I'm not going to malign him as a person. I don't know anything about him. I don't know what he's like as a father, as a husband, or as a friend. And that's freedom of speech. I can say I don't like what's happening in this country. I don't like the politics that is in charge. I don't like what's happening. And, and how do I say that? Not only can I say that with my voice, but I can also say that with my vote. And so, good people of the United States of America, we need to wake up and know who we're voting for. We don't know them personally. You cannot say I'm not voting him because I don't like the way he combs his hair. I don't know. Stupid, stupid thing. I don't like because he's old or I don't like because he's too young. Look at their voting record. Look at what they stand for. They've been in politics before. Look at what they've done. Look at the area that they have been um, leading and say, Were, was that area better off for that person being in charge there are ways to find out what this person how how this person is going to rule in government and i think that it's important that we take a minute to look at ourselves and say how am i voting why am i voting the way that i'm voting what do i believe on these subjects and who aligns most closely or even sometimes it's just who's not directly opposed. Sometimes we have to choose the best candidate out of what we had and it's not gonna align perfectly with what we believe. This country was founded on Judeo-Christian values. The idea that there is a God and that he created each person equally with rights and all of our rights need to be protected and none of us have the right to infringe on somebody else's we lose our rights when we don't follow the law when we don't respect other people's rights when we infringe and put at risk people people groups
not about the people, the immigrants themselves as individual people per se, but it is becoming, it is a crisis. It's a crisis. I mean, we've had slashings in, the, in New York and a man thrown under, under the thing and he, under the subway. Had a, an officer, and this is all by illegal aliens, not, you know, obviously we have our own crime in our country, but then we have, and this is just in the last month, and only the ones that we know of, a, uh, in Washington, an officer hit and killed, um, then, you know, there's the uh, Lake and Riley case, and, and it goes on and on, and, and many of these people who have committed these crimes have in the past committed other crimes. So it is a crisis. We are in a crisis in our country and our government is only looking outside the country to help on the outside of the country. We need to we need to start looking inside and making changes for the people of this country. If we need to look at the laws and change the laws, then, then that is what our government needs to do. And we the people need to speak up and say what we want. Write to our congressmen, write to our senators, right to our representatives, our mayors, everybody. We have the right to do that. We cannot just sit back and complain and do nothing. We don't have the right to complain if we're not willing to speak up and say, this is what I would like to see happen. I'm, I'm upset about this. What's happening? How can this be changed? Because this is a government that is supposedly by the people and for the people. The people that in, are in charge are voted in by us. We did that. Now let's change it. Let's vote them out. I hope that y'all have a nice day. I look forward to